Hello, and welcome to episode number 43 of Excel TV. How you doing, Sylvia? I'm never better, Rick. It's always a good night on Excel TV, but especially when we bring the Ohio talent. What do you think about that, Jordan? Well, I'm happy to be here. Ohio represent. I'm here in Cleveland, Ohio. How about you, George? How are you? Uh, I'm about four miles down the road from you in Cleveland, the Excel bastion. <laughs> this is Rick, Rick of Excel TV. How you doing? I'm sporting the new, uh, the new icon here today. And I also got some special news for you here from the Excel TV headquarters here in Jacksonville, Florida. Gosh, you know, we're going to be at the Past Business Analytics Conference at the very beginning of May. Uh, May 2nd through 4th, I believe. So we would like for you to go check that out. But, you know, in working with the Past Business Analytics Conference, they have offered us, check this out, out down here below, a coupon. So if you haven't registered yet, for the past business analytics com conference, go ahead and put the coupon code Excel TV. Excel TV. Go ahead and check that out, and that's two hundred dollars off May second through fourth. We'll see you there down in, down there in California. Next up, Jordan with the Excel challenge of the month. So I asked you. I asked you who is the father of pivot tables. So let's see who that was. It was Pito Salas. Now I don't know. I've never. You know, here's the thing. I'd never heard of Pito Salas until I read about it. Um, also, it was on a previous question. I should have known about it because uh, Sylvia had actually asked it on a previous question. So I don't really know, Pito Salas. If you are a fan of Excel TV and you. <laughs> are watching this. Sorry, it was a holler. To talk to you. Yeah, it was a holler. Yes, love to talk to you about pivot tables, our favorite subject. So let's look at this month's winners. I am using your names that are on um, our website on excel.tv, so Bball, Chase, and M, I'm going to follow up with you privately through your emails, which we have, to let you know what you've won. And there's a book. There are two books. Uh, one of them is mine. Another one is Oz's. And they are available for you. Here's a question for you. This is this week's Excel challenge. What cell range is in the exact center of an Excel 2013 spreadsheet? So here is what I'm asking. I'm not asking what the exact uh, center is, but the cell range, because as you know, and here's a hint, the size of Excel 2013, that entire spreadsheet, are even numbers of rows and even number of columns. So I'm looking for a range, the smallest range. Uh, that is our question. If you think you know the answer, feel free to post on our YouTube and on the Excel.tv challenge page. We look forward to hearing your answers. This time we're going to be reaching into our Excel TV uh, challenge stash to see what prizes we have. So it's potentially an ebook of Advanced Excel Essentials or maybe something else. But whatever it is, we promise it'll be fun and you will enjoy it. Back to you, Rick. Next up, our Excel interview with Mr. George J. Mount, the purveyor, over at georgejmount.com, an economics and business analytics website with, with quite a big content area on your blog around Excel. How you doing, George? And could you tell us a little bit about your website? Hi, Rick. Good night, everybody. Uh, so the website is really for anybody who probably uses Excel uh, in their work. Um, so it's a lot of business analytics, a little bit of like business economics, um, but it's kind of like my my knowledge dump of everything I've kind of learned over the past few years as an analyst, and Excel's a big chunk of that. Gotcha. So when did you first decide to, to open up a, a website or open up a blog? How did that come about? You know, it's probably been like a couple of years now. Uh, I love writing, went to liberal arts school, so it's, you know, the need to create is deep within me, and uh just started writing and you know it's the common thing about um, you don't know like I don't know what I'm gonna write about but you know I, after each post I kinda started seeing a pattern um, and started thinking about you know what are the things that I wish I'd known coming out of my liberal arts degree about business analytics about Excel things like that um, so that's kind of been the journey and uh, I think you've kinda seen the the voice develop over time and Definitely, you know, getting involved with the Excel blogging world has been a big step in uh, kind of seeing this creation come to life. Cool. cool. So, George, you said, um, you know, you, you have a liberal arts degree, and I know from a lot of the work on your blog that you don't 
don't just do straight Excel exams. You like to make comparisons that are sort of outside the conventional mold, probably you know, somewhat in relation to folks who are in more liberal arts settings. So can you tell us a little bit about that, why you choose to um, you know, uh, use, other, uh, use other sorts of topics in your Excel, in your Excel blogging, or just also in, bi in your business analytics blogging, I should say? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I knew that I didn't want to just make, you know, an Excel knowledge dump. I mean, you know, there's huge forums out there, really great websites, um, a lot of resources. So I want to kind of lend a unique voice to that. And uh, given my background, you know, with like economics and analytics and everything, kind of making it more applied Excel, right? So I, I don't, you know, just copy paste this code done you know I'm trying to you know step back I make the analogy of you know your first soccer practice you know the soccer ball's not even there you know you're just kind of you know picturing how how all this would work so that's I'm trying to get people to step back and attack things in Excel and data in different ways which I think is helpful with like a liberal arts degree that's where the value really comes in with this kind of stuff cool great um, so uh, any advice for people who come from non-traditional backgrounds on um, how they can start learning Excel? Yes, this has been a huge passion of mine because I was so lost starting out and I even went to, so I went to a great liberal arts school, uh, economics degree, then I went to a very good business school, got a master's in finance, and I was still clueless, right? So going to my interviews, I had no idea um, what to say, what I should know. You know, the Excel that I kind of learned in classes wasn't really what uh, was needed in jobs. So uh, really, what the answer for that is, like, check out the site because it's really what I'm trying to push at. Um, so it's georgeshamont.com. Um, I've been blogging. I have, you know, several dozen posts on there. Um, my big push right now is is putting a course together on all this. So if you go over to the site, like that's going to be kind of the portal for that. Um, kind of getting that in motion. And when we go into the white paper that I set up for for everybody tonight, um, that kind of guides you about what kind of things I'll be covering in the course. So so yeah, if you're coming from into Excel with kind of a, a non-business or non-data background, I definitely encourage you to check out the site because I was in the same place a few years ago, and this is kind of my dump of what I wish I'd known. Coming out of a liberal arts degree and, and then moving into Excel, how did you go about doing that? I mean, what was the, what was the process and what was the thinking as you went go from a liberal arts degree and then start actually uh, executing against Excel? What sort of challenges did you have? Um, really not knowing the challenges that analysts face. Um, and not understanding that, you know, kind of the concept of like data wrangling, you know, kind of you know, things are not packaged in nice, tidy problem sets like in real business. And I think when you're in school, that's normally how things are set up. Even in, when you're in a very good program, you know, you still like get the data, it's all ready to go, you know, do a couple of regressions, et cetera, you're done. Um, but Real business doesn't work that way, so you know, learning, especially in Excel, I mean, that's the vehicle. No matter where you go, you're going to use Excel for business. So, starting there, it's a great tool to uh, you know, kind of build these skills, and that that was kind of that's been my medium of you know, turning kind of a liberal arts degree into you know, knowing how to work with data in Excel. Um, especially just thinking about how can I manage my data better. How can I analyze it better? Um, so that's been kind of the challenges and, and what I've been documenting on the blog, uh, how I'm getting by those. So I do have a question from you. You know, uh, some of your fellow bloggers out there uh, realized that you were going to be on the show. And they wanted me to ask you some questions. Ooh. All right. So I have a question for you here, Mr. George J. Mount, from Mr. Kevin Lairbass mm. over at myspreadsheetlab.com wants to know, what is more fun to work with in Excel for you, VBA or array formulas? Ooh. Mm. I'm probably more on the VBA, uh, few, fewer keyboard shortcuts, 
control shift and there's too many keys to push. So uh, <gasps> yeah, more more of a VBA guy. So yes. Okay, well, with that, thank you very much for that. We're going to go ahead and move on to the topic section. Over to you, Sylvia. I want to get into ways to sell yourself with Excel because our uh, special guest, George J. Mount of Ohio, where all the great talent comes from, and Chef Boyardee, um, has put together a really interesting, what I thought was a really interesting white paper on um, ways to sell yourself with Excel. So all of us on this panel have done exactly that, and I'm sure we all have our own um, methods, tried and true, and, and also ones that were not so successful, perhaps. So I guess I'll throw out the first question. George, can you give us a short summary of how, to, how you sell yourself with Excel, and then I'll invite our panel to chime in with how they got started selling themselves as Excel experts. Yeah, great. So my analogy kind of to start that white paper, and if you go to georgeshamach.com slash TV, you can mm -hmm. find that, um, and then we'll post it in the notes uh, on Excel TV too. Um, I think of it as kind of like the tree in the forest kind of analogy. You know, if it falls and nobody hears it, did it really? You know, did it make a noise? So, you know, if you know a lot of Excel, but nobody really knows that you know all of it, like, do you really know Excel? Um, so that is where I really think that uh, learning a little bit of, of selling yourself, marketing yourself, is really important for analysts. Most of the time we think that, like, oh, marketing, you know, like, I'm a data guy. I don't need to know that. But it really is important. You know, everybody needs to have kind of their own, you know, personal brand. Um, so so my white paper kind of goes through ways on, on doing that, uh, whether it's, like, going through LinkedIn, uh, what to put into your resume, um, you know, ways of kind of communicating the value that you can bring to Excel because I think it's – one of the most important things that really any professional should know because it's so widely used that no matter where you go and no matter what industry it is, you know, it's going to use Excel in some way. So that's something that you can immediately, you know, maybe you don't understand the business or the industry that well the first couple months, but if you know Excel, you can come in right away and, and add something to, to that organization. So that's why I kind of think it's a great tool for Self branding and self marketing, and and what and I guess is kind of for everybody then, but yeah. for, for 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 all of you, um, and, and Jordan, you've had to market yourself, mm -hmm. and Sylvia certainly, uh, particularly as a trainer and a consultant, being out there, you've had to market your skills, and maybe as as yeah. bloggers, it's a little bit different for us because we've already had to make that jump, <laughs> you know, to kind of put ourselves out there. Um, have have any of you found it difficult to take that first step to kind of jump on stage for the first time and say, "Okay, well, I'm going to uh, I'm going to start to market myself." And did it feel weird for you, like it felt for me? Hell yeah! I'll tell you something. I in um, I guess more recent years, frankly, I've started moving away from the title Excel consultant. At at first, I, it seemed really exciting, and I thought, of <laughs> but frankly, I'm. I guess I've found more and more that people don't always care so much about your weapon of choice, if you will. Mine happens to be Excel because I love it and I'm good at it. I'm great at it. But at the end of the day, do people really care about that as much as can you help us solve our problems? So uh, just to add to that, um, you know, I am... Um, I've been going, I, I started out uh, marketing myself as like Excel expert or Excel consultant. And I really thought, in addition to that, I thought, hey, if I put in the time and I get the Excel MVP, um, that will just pay dividends because I will be the best. But what I found out is nobody really knows what an MVP is. So while it was a great professional goal, it certainly didn't uh, help me get any more business because then I had to sell what an MVP was. So in addition to explaining what I do, I had to say, hey, this is not a certificate, it's an award. So in many ways, I've sort of moved away from that because it's been a lot of work uh, to explain what an MVP is. And really what people are looking for is kind of a jack-of-all-trades that is manifest. Not, I shouldn't say jack-of-all-trades, but someone who's good at data wrangling or data visualization and is just manifest of these technologies. So 
Uh, the Excel expert is actually really more of a data expert or a data visualization expert or a BI expert. Uh, and this, these, like Sylvia said, are their tools of choice. Um, so you really need to hit both things because some people do have requirements where they say we must use this technology. But you do, the value is, is, is really the return on investment for the business. And that's what I've struggled and hopefully have succeeded in the last few years uh, selling myself. Here's, here's kind of what I ran into. And, and with selling yourself, uh, not only professionally kind of in, in the job, but um, a, a fear that we all have, and certainly I had as well in putting myself out there. And I had a business coach just before I got into the Excel TV thing and deciding to, to go down that path because, you know, who, who am I? Uh, to start up Excel TV, and then before that, even to start up uh, the blog and to start doing interviews with Jordan and Minda Tracy uh, before Excel TV even started. Who am I to do that? And I had a I had a business coach who was walking me through it, and, and my business coach happened to be a guitar player. And he said, "You know, I can sit around Rick all day long. He's a guitar player in Netherlands or something, right? Out in Switzerland, I think. Um, so he's a guitar player out there, and he says um, he also happens to be a great business coach." And he said, there are people all over here who play, who can play guitar incredible. But, but, but most people will sit around and complain about the music scene. And complain about there's not enough jobs, there's not enough this, there's not enough that, the environment. Right, complain about the environment. He said, and my life changed once I stopped complaining about that and instead said, okay, I'm going to take my guitar and I'm going to go out on the sidewalk and I'm just going to start playing. I'm going to start marketing myself, and I'm just going to start playing. And he said, "And Rick, that's what you need to do: get a hold of Jordan Goldmeyer interviewing, <laughs> get a hold of get a hold of these people and start interviewing them, and get a hold of these people and and start talking. And don't be scared to do it because Rick, here, here's here's something that's going to happen: um, your fear and everybody's fear when they're kind of marketing themselves for the first time. The fear is that you're uh, that everybody gives a shit. <laughs> Guess what? Nobody gives a shit. Yeah. No, nobody, nobody's, yeah. nobody's really concerned about your personal struggle. And, and as much as you think you're on stage and maybe that you're you're beating your chest or anything else, nobody else really cares. And and they they will there will there will be a lot of people and friends and neighbors and people that you consider friends who will admire you for it. And there will be some even close friends who will kind of talk shit about you. <laughs> that's really because you're doing something that's out of the norm. Don't let that dissuade you. You know, be be the be part of the two percent who market yourself and to and to kind of make that next step. So and, anyway, I'm getting a little bit off on soapbox here. No, but I, I say all that just to say I think good. it's I think it's important like to it. market yourself. Go ahead, Jordan. Sure. Um, so what I was going to say is that um, you know a lot of people get really concerned because they're like, well, who am I to who am I to comment on this? Uh, and I understand that that concern because you think you're not good enough. Um, you're sort of afraid of what other people might say. But I want to just speak about a previous guest that we had on, who was John Michalaudis. Uh I think at some point in 2014, I had sent out something to all the people on my email list, asking them, well, what do you want to learn thinking about putting a class together? And John wrote back and said, I really want to watch a class about pivot tables. And I never really made that class because that's not my subject. But guess who actually now has a class and is considered an expert on it? It's John. So he went out and he learned it, and then he decided to take that information, distill it, and sell it. And he's doing very well. And he took that leap. And some people say, oh, in three or four years, I'll be ready. It seemed like he did it in less than a year. So um, it's not really a question of, of learning talent. Um, it's not a question of getting to a point where, you, where your expertise is ready. It's really getting to a point where you yourself are ready. Um, what's, your, what's your take on that, George? Yeah, I think that, that one thing that really helps is instead of, of looking at Excel as kind of like a domain of knowledge, thinking about kind of the end user and trying to uh, funnel a lot of information, including Excel, in, into what would value that person. And, and make sure that you kind of communicate that you do care, you know, about, about helping them. Um, so, like, my blog, for example, you know, I go back and forth all the time, like, is it an Excel blog, is it not, is it more, you know, economics, analytics, like, what is all this stuff? But, you know, I kind of have the the target in mind of, you know, somebody that's coming out of school, you know, they have an interview at the bank next week, how much Excel do you know? Oh, what, I don't know, what's that? Like, what do you use Excel? Like, how do you use that? Um, so, 
really trying to think about who can I really help. So instead of just thinking, oh, you know, like nobody knows Excel, and that's part of why I, I really enjoy it is it's kind of like a, you know, cloud of information. Some people know some things, other people know other things, and, you know, we kind of have this communication thing going on with the blogs, exchanging things. So everybody has a pl place to, to, to play in that. Um, in my example, you know, I'm really trying to target it or toward people about, you know, how can I get started in data? How can I get started as an analyst? So that's kind of how I've approached, you know, tackling the the knowledge problem, the end user problem, and things like that. So, so if you think there are in, in your white paper, are there are there a, a few target areas that you think are the most important that people that people focus on as they're starting to market themselves with Excel? Well, I definitely think so. Going, so I'm trying to put all this stuff into a course. Uh, that's like been my big push. Um, my two top recommendations to learn are VLOOKUPs and pivot tables. Um, I kind of I use like you know the old saw about the handyman that can fix everything with WD40 and duct tape. Like I kind I say that VLOOKUPs are like the duct tape of Excel. Pivot tables are the WD40 of Excel. Learn those two things. You know that'll handle 80% of your data starting out if you want to be an analyst. Um, so really understanding why you want to do that. You know thinking about data integrity, um, data wrangling, all those issues um, can really get you on your way. And it really starts making you think about you know how to structure data well, how to use it, you know how to frame problems. Um, so that's how I would suggest uh, somebody starting out what they look at first, um, and then you know walking into you know how to present all this stuff at an interview because again like just saying you know all these functions like that's not really going to impress a lot of managers. You want to talk about you know this report will be accurate. It will be done quickly. It will be flexible. So if we need to add things, take things away, I can do that. Um, so kind of you know, not just going on about, oh, what I know, but saying, you know, what does this do for you? Again, focusing on kind of like, what does the end user really value? Focusing on the benefits, not the features? Definitely, yeah. That's it. So um, I, I know Jordan and Sylvia, you have to do this on a pretty regular basis too in your training as you're outselling yourself as a consultant, et cetera. I mean, this is kind of a, a, a weekly, monthly struggle. Maybe that's the wrong word, I don't know. Uh, but it's something you have to tackle quite often. Um, what what sort of how do you go about marketing yourself outside of like you know the web and this that the other? How do you go about marketing yourself whenever you're marketing your skills? Um, I would say I you know I call myself a data scientist because it's in vogue, and I have the statistics uh, skills and um, the the like data science programming skills to call myself one. But I don't, I don't necessarily care as much about that. I guess the way I market myself is uh, you have a data problem. You, your business has a problem right now. The problem is that you don't know how to realize value from your data or you are obsessed with data or you are not interested enough in the data. When I say obsessed, there are organizations that are just so focused on being data-driven that they metric themselves to death. Um, and the data they collect is junk, but they're just so, hey, this is the data. It's the truth. We can't get around it. Uh, that's not really how it operates. So I try to say that I help you become confident with your data. So that's how I, I guess I, I market myself. I don't really try to market myself in a technology angle at all because I think technology projects have a lot of issues where they run over budget and run out of over schedule. And I want people to view me as more of a management consultant. So yes, I call myself data scientist. It's in vogue, but really all I try to get a sit down with a client or a conversation because then I can say, hey, peel back these layers. You have your real problem is a business case. It's not a data case. It's not a technology case. I could not agree more. Yeah. Um, well, this is a great point that you bring up, Jordan, because um, I think George, somewhere in your white paper or somewhere, I saw you make a comment about don't call yourself a data scientist now. But well, I, I said unless unless you are one. <laughs> unless you are yeah, one. Be, le be legit. Right. That's why I added all that stuff. Back when I was in school, you know, like in the 1800s, we had these things called encyclopedias. Now it's it's called Wikipedia, and I so I would just like to share with you the definition of data science. According to Wikipedia, 
Data science is an interdisciplinary field about processes and systems to extract knowledge or insights from data in various forms, either structured or unstructured. Ding, 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 we're all data scientists. So I, I agree that it's, you know, it's a good thing to call yourself one because it's in vogue, but I think we really are. Uh, and I think the field is expanding because it isn't just about Excel anymore, it is about solving problems and it is about it is about big data. I'm running into challenges with big data myself at the current client. Everybody uses Excel. Everybody's in VLOOKUP hell. Nobody knows what the hell's going on because there's just too much data. Everybody's spreadsheets take 25 minutes to open because they have it's great that they can do a VLOOKUP, but you can't do VLOOKUP on 300,000 rows of data. Yeah. So I'm just saying that it's it's a different world, and I think it's important to keep that in mind as analysts, as data scientists, if you are brave enough to call yourself one, because it, it is what we do. Right. I've been having a new theory on the definition of data science, and yeah. I think it comes from science. So, you know, what do scientists do? They use a scientific method, right? Mm -hmm. They test hypotheses. They observe things, uh, you know, revise their conclusions. Um, and I think for, and we're talking mostly business here. Um, so really, you know, where you think that a data scientist comes from, you know, knowing how to wrangle these unstructured data sets and everything, I mean, I'm really starting to think it, a lot of it is, you know, do you have a hypothesis, you know, do you have enough knowledge in that subject of expertise that you can kind of make informed uh, predictions and kind of test them um, in that data. So, yeah, in that sense, I mean, I guess it is more broad uh, than, you know, I might have led in this paper, but I do think that, you know, so many people call themselves a data scientist because, you know, they can make a pivot chart or something. It You know, it, it is a lot deeper than just knowing Excel. You have to know a lot of... Uh, subject matter be behind that. Again, it's just the weapon, right? Like, it's not really the, the meat of it, so. Right. Getting into hypothesis testing, et cetera. So you gotta, yes. You're going to make me geek out, so I'm going I'm to not dive too deep on that. But what I was hoping you could do, since the, <laughs> since the uh, entire conversation was uh, to some extent around your white paper and talking about that, do you have a, a copy of that if, that you can kind of show us and talk I about do. to find that again? Uh, so if you go to georgedaymount.com, slash XLTV, uh, you'll get a little landing page, uh, it'll have some notes, and uh, you can click through, get your own special copy of this. Um, I also have a, a login page to, to sign up for the email, so I definitely uh, encourage you to sign up for the list because really we're working hard on a, a course right now and it's going to cover a lot of this stuff. So if you like this, stay tuned. But you can, yeah, George, you have to slash XLTV. <laughs> That's uh, georgejmount.com forward slash Excel TV. Go ahead and check out the white paper there. How do you go about marketing yourself with Excel? So uh, a lot of great thoughts on that, so go check out the white paper there. And, hey, go ahead and put your email on there. Why not? I mean, he's going to have a course coming out here pretty pretty soon. You know, I've been looking, been looking under the covers on that a little bit, and, you know, uh, there's a lot of exciting stuff that George is putting together around the training of how do you go about marketing yourself in, in Excel. So please go take a look at that. Go ahead and sign up for his email list as well. So next up, the Excel tips. You can see, actually, and this is by design, it's probably a little hard to see fully what's going on in my screen because you see it's a little zoomed out. Um, now, this is a question I get quite a bit, and people I, people ask, hey, you train, what are tips you have for when you train? And I learned this right away. I made this mistake. Uh, I tried to do training at this, uh, at this font and zoom level. So, of course, you know in Excel you can zoom in if you need, but a lot of times people can't really see what you're doing up here uh, when you type things. Um, in the formula bar, everything's just too small, especially when it's projected on a big screen. So what I want to show you how to do is actually how to increase your font, because this is something very important. Um, if you just have, let's say you just have eyes that you need to see a larger font, it's also good for that as well. But if not, uh, and you're projecting on a big screen, and you're doing a demo, and you're showing people how to do things, 
what you can do is you can go to File. You saw I went to the Options. It's going to bring up the Excel Options dialog box. And over here, we have the General tab. That's the first tab on the list. As I look down this list, I see something that says uses the default body font. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go, I usually change it to something very large. So in this case, it's 24. I'll hit OK. The effects do not take change right away. I should say the change does not take effect right away. Interesting change of words there. So I'll hit X here, and I'm going to go right back in. We'll click in here. And now suddenly, you see everything is bigger. Oh, nice. Now, this is actually something I use every time I train. So uh, if you if you want to make the font bigger, that's how you do it. Now, here's the thing. It's going to stay like this forever. So here's the other part of the trick. And it's actually just very similar. You're going to go up to File. You're going to go to Options. It's going to bring up that dialog box. you got to fix it back. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. Just show you the trick again. We'll hit 12 right here. That's where I used to be. Make sure to remember what your font was because there isn't something in here. I don't think... Uh, that uh, remembers it by default. So 12 is the default. Remember, it's going to tell you that you need to go out to make it take effect. So we'll come right back in, and here we are. Everything's just reset. I keep forgetting to save this, so it keeps coming up. But uh, that that is our trick. If you want to change the font, if you're going to put it on a projector, you're going to show it to someone who may uh, be visually impaired. This actually helps quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, Sylvia, I believe you had a tip as well. So we've talked about, uh, we've, we've gotten into some VBA on the show before, and we've talked about, um, I think I'm sure at some point we've talked about the personal macro workbook. The personal macro, macro workbook, if you don't have one, it's a, a place where you can store all those kind of macros that you want to be available globally to any file you use. So they're not really, you know, specific to one uh, file or model that you might be working in. So I have talked about on the show how I have all my sound effects on my um, QAT that I store in my personal macro workbook so that I can have them available in all files. Um, so, you know, I live in LA and um, there's, there's a small amount of narcissism, narcissism in this town, so I like to share macros for narcissists sometimes. Um, when you have a personal macro workbook, Something that you may not have noticed before is if you uh, click on, if you're in your Visual Basic Editor and you expand to look at your personal.xlsb, uh, there is a this workbook module. Now you know that when you start Excel, you have a personal macro workbook. It always opens, and, but it's hidden in the background, right? So you don't actually see it, but it is an open workbook technically. And like with any Excel file where you want to store a macro to fire on the workbook open event, you can do the same thing in your personal.xlsb. So what that means is whenever you open Excel, this macro will fire. And the macro that I chose to fire whenever I open Excel is uses a function called application.speech.speech, which is basically the text function. Next Application username. This will read whoever's, you know, if it's your boss that you, you know, secretly install on his or her uh, computer when they're at lunch, it'll talk to them. Application username just returns the, the name uh, of the user on the computer that you're using. And then this is a little concatenation technique that you can use in VBA. So effectively, if we knew how to make the sound work on the Google Hangouts, I could run this in my immediate window. Well. You look amazing. And it would tell me it's amazing. And so now that I have that built in to my personal.xlsb, it's the first thing I hear when I fire up Excel. And um, this and more VBA tips just like it are available in my book, The 40 Greatest Excel Tips of All Time, in a section called VBA for Troublemakers. So that is my, um, that's my tip. I'm sticking to it. We'll have it up on the Excel TV site after the show. Thank you for that. So next up, the news section. Past Business Analytics Conference. Should go check that out. 
Uh, that is happening on May 3rd through 4th. We'll be there May 2nd, so we'll be there a, a bit early there. A lot of sponsors going on, a lot of cool people there. I and recommend everyone come and check that out. And don't don't forget, there's a $200 coupon. If you just type in Excel TV, Excel TV, all one word, capital E, Excel TV, as uh, at the time of registering, that'll be $200 off. There's a Excel TV will be pretty heavily involved. We'll go over here to the sponsor section, give you an idea, meet our sponsors. If you scroll down here to the bottom, you'll see the media sponsor and our brand new shiny logo, Excel TV. So we'll be there. Um, not only having uh, conversations with each of the keynote speakers, so that'll be part of the interviews that we're doing there. We'll also stream live from there as well, uh, along with some roundtables with, with some of the sponsors. So go and check us out there. If you're around, go check out Jordan. He'll be speaking there. I'll be speaking there. We talked to Sylvia before the show. She might be there as well. She's local. She's going to come and check it out, maybe hang out a little bit. So if you'd like uh, to buy me a, a Russian mule drink or, or something like that, maybe some... Or an uh, Excel-inspired cocktail. Or an Excel-inspired cocktail, by all means, stop by the Past Business Analytics Conference. Our friends over there at the Amsterdam Excel Summit, gosh, that's coming up on May 26th. So if you're over there in Europe, and who doesn't like Amsterdam? <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> I mean, I've never been there, but I even like, yeah, I like the stories. <laughs> so, look who else going to be there. John Peltier, Bob Umless. I mean, it's like Excel. Oz du Soleil. Oh, wow. You didn't tell me that. Yeah. You know, Oz is going to be there. Tony DeJonker and, and Tony DeJonker and people in the know call him JKP, Mr. Jan Carol Patrice, Patierce. I think I'm saying that wrong. You know, Excel MVPs over there in the Netherlands. Um, go check all of these guys out. Bob, oh gosh, the, the longest-running Excel MVP, John Peltier, or for JohnPeltierTech.com, I believe it is, the chart master. Um, so go and check this out, the Amsterdam Excel Summit. Gosh, that's next month, so go check that out as well. Uh, next thing to bring to your attention, Excel TV website. we got a little bit going on over here as well. Now, in our... In our last episode, we talked about the release of Sylvia's book and that, you know, that was in process and that we were in the process of kind of just putting a sales page up and, and putting a cash register next to it so that we could start ringing that thing. And uh, so just want to make you aware of that, that now if you go to our homepage, you'll have a, a Learn More button. If you click on that Learn More button, that will take you to... Um, a little bit of an uh, introduction about what's happening with the book and how you can get instant access to it. So go and check that out. Um, so that book, gosh, we just uh, we just started pushing that out to people just in the last just in the last three or four business days. So the, uh, it's been a, been a lot of that going on. So thank you everybody for helping to support us there. You'll also notice that we're polishing ourselves up a little bit for the past business analytics conference and then gosh we're growing we got a cash register so we can't just be a hangout anymore right we can't just be uh, us just hanging around telling jokes so uh, hey we bought a, a spiffy new icon here as well we're starting to polish things up a little bit as we start to prepare to go I guess we're already global but I mean like global like start to go start to go big city so anyway so uh, so you'll see a lot more of this you'll see the, clean, the website starting to get cleaned up so New logo, etc. So, anyways, go check that out. But also, come over here to the full episodes. Gosh, episode number three. Guess who we have there? We have Mr. George Mount. We have this episode. So, if you click on this episode, this is what's happening right now. Gosh, this right here, like so four minutes ago. <laughs> like that's <laughs> happening like right now. So, anyways, you do have the opportunity to get the book. But also, if you scroll down here, gosh, bloggers do love comments. Come down here and uh, leave a comment for George if you want to have a better idea of how to get that white paper that we talked about or questions on how to get hired or how to sign up for his email list so that you know when the when the video training comes out on how to better market yourself at Excel. Just come here and put in a comment and uh, and you and George will be checking out this page quite a bit, I'm sure. I uh, love comments. Yes. I know. His, um, like his mom will be on this page. Here's, here's the thing. When I first started like blogging, like all of my family thought it was their like their personal place to tell me, hey, great job, Rick. You know that sort of thing. Love ya. You know that sort of thing. So you know, <laughs> so I'll, I'll make sure all of those stay on the page for you, George. 
<laughs> all right. Yeah, occasional love letters work in comments, so that's fine. Yeah, it's all good. Jordan, you had some news as well. I do. Um, so as you can see here, this is the Accelerate Conference, if you can all see my screen. This is part of TDWI. I will be speaking for TDWI at the Accelerate Conference in Boston. Um, this is actually, I'm very honored that they asked me to do this. TDWI is an awesome brand. Um, so uh, come and learn about business intelligence, about um, data visualization, things like that. Now, in particular, you might want to come and see my class. It's called Becoming a Data Head, how to visualize, interpret, and challenge data. And you may not know this, but at some point in the future, when I read, when I write my next book, I'm going to be actually it's going to be called something to that effect about becoming a data head. So this is a three and a half hour uh, lecture, but don't worry, it's going to be filled with fun data jokes. Um, and uh, come out and learn a lot. I'll be in Boston. So that date again is July 18th. That's when I will be on. The whole conference is going to be July 18th through the 20th. So see you there. And we're going to just jump back to me for a moment. Okay, so very important announcement. Um, those of you who have been following my career of jumping around, uh, know that I was in Dayton, Ohio. I moved to Cleveland, Ohio. Um, my wife just landed a job in Long Island, New York. So I am moving to Long Island. Um, she landed a tenure track position at Malloy College. I don't know if any of our viewers go to Malloy uh, or have gone to Malloy. This is very exciting to us, but we are moving to Long Island, and most likely I will be getting a job in Manhattan or starting my consulting company back up. So you need consulting or training, let me know. You want to hire me? Let me know about that, too. A lot of options are available. But if you are in the New York City area where a lot of this Excel stuff goes down, uh, drop you know drop me a line. I'm going to actually probably participate a little bit more in the New York City uh, Excel scene, so hopefully I'll get to see you. And, that's and if news. you're in Cleveland, I need new people to drink beer and talk about Excel with. So. <laughs> and Cleveland, Cleveland, is, Cleveland is stacked with that. More so right. than New York. <laughs> well, congratulations, Jordan. I think I, that's awesome that you're that you have the opportunity again to uh, 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 unleash your skills on, you. on, 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 on the globe. Well, congratulations to my wife, Catherine, too, who uh, yeah. put in years of schooling, 10 years, you know, finishing up her PhD, becoming a doctor, uh, and now going to live uh, to realize all that hard work. So. Um, it's really a, a next step for our lives, and we're very excited. Hey, thanks, Rick. So here's what's going down. Announcement for fellow citizens of Los Angeles and the free world. Friday, May 13th, 2016 at 8.30 a.m. sharp, right here live in Los Angeles, California. I will be doing another live workshop, The Greatest Excel Tips of All Time. You will all receive a copy of my book, and for those of you who are CPAs, here's what you're really going to like, CPE credits. So it is a half a day workshop, so you will get one CPE credit for each 50 minutes of attendance. Two prices, 185 or 200 bucks, depending on whether you are an early bird purchaser, meaning you purchase your ticket by April 26th, then you will get the 185, uh, otherwise it's 200 bucks. And special deal for Excel TV viewers when you're at the um, purchase page. If you type Excel TV, all one word, into the discount code, we'll give you another $10 off. So uh, check it out. If you go to eventbrite.com, set your location to Los Angeles, go up here to the handy dandy search engine and just type Excel tips. And look at that, the greatest Excel tips of all time. There it is. So very easy to find. Uh, come check it out. I can neither confirm or deny that there will be Excel-inspired cocktails as well. <gasps> I know, right? Well, guess you're going to have to come and find out. And that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Hope to see you on Friday, May 13th. Next up, my gosh, where can you find us? We're everywhere. But in addition to that, we're also on Facebook. <laughs> Bet you didn't know that. So we have, we have two communities over on Facebook. We have a Facebook group 
uh, which we were, we're happy that Mr. George Mount here uh, was our 2,000th member. So thank you for... Late to the party, but... Thank, thank yes. you for uh, joining the group once we invited you to be on the show. Hey, we appreciate that. Thank you for... <laughs> thank you for stepping up. <laughs> well, I'll be proud of that. But in addition to that, we also have a Facebook page. And our Facebook page now is just coming up on, gosh, 2,000 or so members, 1,903. So uh, if you want to just... Keep track of things that are happening in the Excel TV community. Uh, go ahead and check us out over here at facebook.com forward slash Excel TV series. In addition to that, George, how can people get a hold of you? All right. Well, if you missed the white paper, that's where I would encourage you to start. Get your own copy, georgejmont.com slash Excel TV. Uh, also, I will be reading all love letters in the Excel TV comment box, and uh, definitely find me on uh, LinkedIn. You can uh, my handle is GJ Mount. Uh, that's going to be the same for Twitter and also Instagram. Uh, I believe I'm really one of the few people posting regular Excel content on Instagram, so I encourage you to uh, follow me over there. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, check out the site first. It'll have links to all the social stuff as well. So help help me with this. How how does one post Excel content to Instagram? What what is what's your angle here? So I am using the video feature, which can only be about five to ten seconds long. So I post just tiny little Excel tips and tricks, you know, keyboard shortcuts, that that sort of thing. Um, but been getting pretty good traction with it. Um, it's, and it's definitely a, a newer medium for uh, Excel lovers. So uh, that's at GJ Mount again, um, posting videos and other, you know, I'll post like a quote here and now too. So um, yeah, it's a it's a good platform that, that I've been using to uh, grow the blog. So find me there. Yep. So Instagram, GJ Mount. Yes. Okay, check you out there. I, I, I got to tell you, I, I'm curious. So uh, I didn't know you were on Instagram, so I'm going to go check that out. That's uh, Instagram. Go check out GJ Mount. But thank you so much for being on the show. I think it's great that what you're doing over there at georgejmount.com. Gosh, it seems, uh, seems you've been uh, starting to put out quite a bit of content. And I also see that you're very active over on LinkedIn as well, posting a lot of free content out there on LinkedIn. So I would encourage people to follow you over on LinkedIn um, as you post quite a bit of content out there as well. So thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Like, th thank you very much too. So until next time, everyone. This is, gosh, this was episode number forty-three. I can see a path to a hundred. That should really scare like every, everybody's mom. I mean, that's that's a lot of like video to have to watch as a mom. I mean, just because you're committed to your kids. I mean, that's just that's 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 really too much. So thank you very much for, for joining us for episode 43. Next month, episode 44 might be a little bit special. In addition to our normal episode that we'll have, we'll also be streaming live, gosh, in about three weeks and uh, at, at the Past Business Analytics Conference. So check that out. There'll be a lot of it, several videos coming out from the keynote speakers that we'll be interviewing, and uh, plus we'll be streaming live. So in addition to that, we'll have our next episode in about a month. So until next time. This is Rick Grantham, along with Sylvia Juhas and Jordan Goldmeyer, reminding you to keep on excelling. We'll see you next time.